What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to a new month, new playtest, new patch, and new Supervive meta tier list. I know you all just want to play, so let's get right into it without wasting any of your time. Starting off, let's discuss the main characters that are not going anywhere, that being Oath, Myth, and Celeste. They're going to be staying at their top position because these characters have been consistently performing at the highest level of play and continue to do so. I am never mad if I have a myth on my team for her excellent utility in zoning as well as anti-heal. Oath and Celeste fill a very similar role together and currently I mess with Oath a little bit more than Celeste but you need one of the two of them to really hold space and enable your team. But now the patch gets interesting, which if you miss that and don't want to read the whole thing, because to be honest, it is pretty long. I have a video I released yesterday quickly giving you a rundown of the important stuff in the description. So let's continue to the first character, that being Bishop. In my opinion, Bishop is the big winner of this patch. And because of that, I'm actually really going to be putting her in A tier. Specifically, the reason why I think she's really good is because her abilities, the way they reworked everything, I think it really went in her favor because they kind of cooked with her the most. And on top of that, she is like the number one counter to Oath. At least when I'm playing Oath, I feel like the most losing matchup is realistically Oath into Bishop. And because I think so many people are really going to be abusing this hero, I think if you want to run Bishop, maybe as like a weird Joker pick, she actually could be really good. And we've seen the Bomba Squad actually use that in the lore tournament to just absolutely decimate teams. I mean, Mithy also is pretty goaded at the Bishop. So that's also another part of it. But I think if other people got to that level of Bishop, we could see a little bit more counterplay to the oath and that maybe lets some other characters do some things but maybe i'm i don't know maybe i'm smoking crack with that one on to the next character though we have brawl and honestly brawl is a little bit of a hard one for me because no one really plays brawl outside of i think like Toomey and chip Roll. and the character really struggles at higher levels of, of play when everyone's using the myth to the best of the myth ability that being said it's going to pub stomp pretty much anyone if you are good at them until you get to that high rank and most of the player base i mean it's a play testing game they're not they're not really going to be the goats at the game because they're barely even playing it they're not watching vods so i think if you're good at brawl you can kind of stomp lobbies if you're not it's going to be hard i kind of want to put him in like a top b tier position i'm going to be honest i think he's like an a tier character in pubs but for most people he's kind of hard there are other characters that are just going to get more value for you this patch. Brawl isn't bad, but I don't think he's quite the GOAT either. So for most players, I'm going to give him a B tier. I'm not really mad if I have him on my team, but there's definitely better options. Next up, we have Aluna, which on my stream, if you've been following that, I say that Aluna is the worst character in the game time and time again because while well, she's a support and Zeph, who we'll talk about later, pretty much does everything she does even better. The problem is, while she is D tier and completely terrible, she's easy to pick up, which is nice, but there's actually a character that's even worse than Aluna. We're gonna talk about that character right now. That character now is Shrike. Yes, I know for newer players, you're probably thinking, Aluna and Shrike, worst characters in the game? What the heck? They're in all of my games. Uh, what I will say is when you're learning the game, these characters kind of just break rules and it gets a little bit annoying. But hear me out here. The new ability system for Shrike, she used to have her cremation on the bird bomb all the time. And on her dash, whenever she got a knock, she used to get that dash back every single time. But now, with the new leveling system, she can only pick one of the two of those by getting one of those abilities to level three. So on top of that, she doesn't have any of this until the end of the game when she hits realistically at least level like seven. So to be honest, she's even worse than she was before. She wasn't really that great of a character to begin with. I think she might be the new worst character in the game. Now, here's the thing. There's still a good... I mean, Jackalackin is probably going to do some crazy things on this character. Pine's going to do some crazy things on this character. It doesn't mean that the character's impossible. It's just like, wow, we just nerfed a character that was already pretty bad at high tier when you start to learn how to play around her. But I can understand this is going to make the new player experience better. Now, if you thought Bishop was interesting, the next character on the list being Felix is actually maybe even more interesting because I think... If people start running the bishop and you start countering the oath, realistically, what kind of tankier character do you want if you don't want, like, you want to run a Celeste, but maybe Felix 
is a lot stronger than Oath if you counter the Oath, because, I mean, his anti-heal is really good. The new Flame Shield at level 3 is absolutely insane when we were testing that in the Veteran test in the test this previous Friday, I believe. So, I, you know, I don't want to say he's, like, A-tier by a mile and that he's just like the goat pick and like a tier i mean that's a very that's a very prestigious tier all things considered but i i really think people are gonna sleep on this character i think if you can manage to counter an oath and the oath doesn't just look at the felix because he kind of just will if you don't have a tool like a bishop to make sure that the oath doesn't look at the felix if you don't have that he definitely struggles in his a tier but if you do have that bishop and you want to maybe just play to absolutely dunk on an oath composition I could see Felix being quite strong this patch. But again, we're going to have to see. Maybe again, this is some hot take. But um, I think he's a big winner in this patch on top of Bishop. I don't think there's really any other winners besides those two. Um, but hey, maybe I'm wrong. And here's the thing. Now we have Ghost. And Ghost was an absolute beast last patch. And to be honest, nothing has really changed. He's still just an incredibly solid and consistent play uh, player. It's a very solid and consistent character that is actually really good at melting Oath Shield. I think the only character that can really do it very quickly, uh, aside from Gunner. And that's obviously an asset too if you want to try to go for that. That being said, he will struggle to run from specific comps that can just get on top of him, like Bishop and Felix. So maybe, maybe Ghost is not S here. I'm going to put him in S here just because I think he's a little bit more consistent over a ton of different games. Like over the long term, you're probably going to win more games with a Ghost composition. That being said, I could also see... If this Felix Bishop thing starts working out for some people, maybe you can start dunking on him because he has a really hard time consistently shooting. Like, he, he does have a lot of mobility, don't get me wrong, but the more that he's going to just keep running, the less damage he's doing overall and the more opportunities maybe someone else on this Bishop and Felix team is going to find a little bit more value than him. So I still think he's going to be a really good pick, probably one of the best uh, characters in the game right now, just maybe not as egregious as he was last test, which, I mean, if we went even more strong... For, from last patch with all these characters in S tier, I think we'd have some serious problems. But now talking about the lesser version of Ghost, which is Gunner. Um, really good at shooting an O shield. The problem is he moves like a boulder. Like he just does not move at all. It's so hard to get good mobility with this guy. You kind of just need your team to make all the space for you. If you can manage to break the O shield, you just got infinite value in this meta. But the problem is I think you're better off just running Ghost. I'm going to give him C tier. Maybe there's some goaded gunner players out there that we have yet to see. Um, but most of the good gunner players are just giving up on the character, waiting for him to get buffed, and are playing another character instead. So I think that's pretty indicative of maybe how bad the character is. But here's the thing. If I ever see an Aluna and a Shrike on my team, I'm crying. If I have a gunner, I think the game is at least playable. That's my take on, on the whole thing. But now let's move on from the yapping on gunner and let's move on to Jewel. And... You know, Jewel got a little bit of love this test, and to be honest, I, I've been kind of a Jewel hater. I used to hate playing against her, but now I think she's a little less annoying because Oath is so strong. Now, this is the thing. Jewel is only kind of bad last patch because Oath was incredible. Again, here's the thing. Now we're looking at this Felix Bishop thing, and if we can just deny the Oath out of the fight, Jewel begins to look very strong again. That being said, it's really hard to make work. If you're really good at Jewel, you will be getting a lot of value out of her. I'm going to put her in B tier simply because Oath is just so hard to deal with consistently. And I think there's just better characters that will be a little bit more consistent. I mean, consistency in a battle royale, in a tournament setting, or just trying to get a lot of wins is just like the best kind of statistic or characteristic rather of a hunter that i'm really looking for and jewel just isn't as consistent as she used to be i still think she could find herself a place on the top squad that gets the most wins in this september playtest if a squad plays to enable it but for the majority of players i think jewel is going to just kind of stay in the middle she'll be really good if you're really good with her but kind of like brawl you have to be really really consistent and it's really difficult now kingpin Kind of weird to me, a big loser this patch because, I mean, the items and the way that they work now don't really favor how he wants to play. Like, he doesn't get to just run double tank item anymore to do, like, one-shot combos, and he doesn't really follow up on his hooks because people are a little bit more durable. So because of that, I'm actually going to be putting him in C tier with Gunner. I might put him above Gunner a little bit. 
I just don't know. There's just a little, little bit of sauce that's missing with this character right now. I think he is still like really strong, like conceptually being able to hook people out of position and maybe look for something. And he's also pretty decent into Oath, but the problem is he's only decent into Oath if you can win that matchup and Oath can also just block your hooks. So I think it's just, while it could be really good, it's just too hard to make work, in my opinion, to warrant playing him over a bishop, a ghost, a jewel, a myth. Like, I just don't see myself saying, yeah, let's let's find a kingpin. Uh, I don't know. This patch especially, he just kind of seems like he lost a little bit of the sauce that made him possible to be A. Oh, on, yeah, and on top of that, he doesn't get his anti-heal on his ult until level 8. So that is also a... Significant nerf, whether you realize it or not. That's a very big deal when Zeph can just kind of right-click his entire team and now they're all full health again. So that's definitely something that should be looked at and makes him a lot weaker. Now, Shiv is a really weird fun, a really weird one for me because she's kind of like Brawl in the sense that she just kind of pub stomps things and she really struggles against things that can poke her forever like that ghost that's going to be really strong on top of characters that are actually just going to like get on top of her and just stun her consistently like a bishop. Like I, I'm going to be honest, the more I look at this Shiv character, the more I realize, you know, she's just kind of a pub stomper and doesn't really do anything for the team. I do think she's going to be really good for most players. I don't think she's lost too much sauce. Uh, the abilities in the item system doesn't really favor her too much. I think she's a little bit better than Brawl. She'll be a little bit more consistent, all things considered. But I don't think she's going to be like a crazy meta-defining pick like we see in the A tier. Now, moving on to the next one, Void. You know, I've always been a Void, not, not necessarily a Void hater. I love Void. I think he's actually an incredible character. I think people are sleeping on Void for a while. That being said, I don't want to put him too high on the list because he doesn't have a lot of mobility and it really is just a team composition check. Like, are people good with Void? Uh, I don't think you can just lock Void and win games like you can with Ghost. Like, you can't just pick this guy and then, oh yeah, I'm just the GOAT. Ghost, you literally just pick the guy, you hold left click every now and then, people's health bars gets diminished immediately, and it's just GG. Void, though, I'm going to keep moving him up on the list as I see Void players consistently get better and better and better with each patch. I mean, shout out to Nidhogg. I'm telling you straight up, King Nidhogg, that guy's crazy at Void. I'm, I'm probably going to put in some clips in here of him absolutely destroying my team from some of the previous tests. Also, shout out to Fernie and Chips as well. Great Void players. We need more of them. We need more of him because I seriously think this character is going to be insane on launch. And I really want to see some of the clips, best clips on this character as well. So if you want to clip farm, get good at Void. Void's a pretty fun character to watch as well. So now that we're down to only two other two other characters, saying players, two other hunters, we have Zeph. Now, Zeph didn't really feel as great as he did the previous test on these... Um, rear weird like veteran play tests that we did with the new items and stuff that being said i still just i cannot put him any lower than s tier because he's the only character that fills the role in a way that aluna and oath don't they don't really do it i mean his healing is insane his e his grenade i have it on e his vacuum grenade that sucks people in is just absolutely can just decimate teams the only problem that i really see is that he kind of went down a few levels because of the items like the items don't really favor supports really that hard right now the bubble blade is kind of lackluster you're just getting lower cds if you press people with your m1 other other characters kind of got a little bit more out of those items now how much it actually is i i could be overstating it but my thing is I'm never going to be mad if someone locks Zeph on my team because it's just, it's, he's just all around a solid character. And until other supports get added or until they nerf him so much that he, you'd, you'd just rather run another DPS, I just, I see him as an S tier character that people are going to lock every single time. Um, I, I don't, I'm, I might lock him this test. I also might lock Oath because Oath is literally Thanos this patch. Um, just like Zeph was Thanos last patch. Uh, I just think the role is kind of reversed. Now Oath is Thanos. So, it is what it is. I don't know. Character's pretty strong. Moving on to Stalker, though. Stalker is a really hard one as well because I just don't know exactly where he ends up. There's not a lot of crazy Stalker players outside of Blixman and OC. Um, what I will say is that I don't think he's D tier anymore. There were a few times where I just kind of got caught out of position and he just double like execution slammed me and I just kind of died, which was really annoying. But I don't think it was as egregious as it was a few months ago when he was like absolute meta. 
I think the problem with Stalker is that he's just a worse version of Brawl, and he's more so annoying to play with than just not play with, annoying, annoying to play against than just like Brawl that's just gonna actually be good. Like he's just annoying. He's like a mosquito that you just kind of have to deal with and you have to hear him go. Huh, 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 huh. It's just really annoying. That being said, I think he's like top echelon C tier. I, eh, maybe maybe below Kingpin. I, I don't really know how I feel about these characters. They, they're just missing some sauce. They're missing something that makes them really interesting to me. They're just kind of there to have more characters. And that's the tier list we have for the September Super 5 test. Like I said previously, any character can work in Supervive with the right team and the right powers and just playing the map well. These are just the current winners and losers that I have for this patch at this moment. Oath mains rejoice this patch. It will be super fun until they nerf us back to the ground. And if you have any questions, make sure to watch me live here on YouTube or Twitch to learn together. All those links will be in the description. Aside from that, thank you guys all so much for watching. But until next time, I've got a peace out and paz out. I'll see you in the next one.